Hi there, it's Stephen Huzar, and I play uh, Detective Jake Killian, Ruby Herring Mysteries. And I'm sitting here with the lies from Man Cave Chronicles. Welcome to another episode of the Man Cave Chronicles. Welcome to the party, pal! You're my boy, bro! You it! I did it! A podcast with interviews of amazing guests from the world of pop culture. Oh, yeah! TV. Nice! Movies. Oh, I love the movies. Comedy and more. From deep inside the Man Cave, your host, Elias. Steven, welcome to the cave. Thanks very much. I'm happy to be here. How are you, man? What's new with you? Well, you know, making the best out of the situation, uh, trying to keep as, uh, I guess, healthy as possible, you know, running, doing a lot of yoga, eating well, that kind of thing. Yeah. What else have you been doing? Yeah, uh, how about yourself? With uh, staying in and everything. Yeah, you know, I have uh, two kids, so I, you know, I'm trying to keep them safe and everything. You know, my, me and my wife are both working from home right now. So, you know, it's, okay. it's, a, it's a challenge. Of course. Yeah. yeah, it really is. I can I can only imagine. Luckily I don't have kids, uh so I was able to uh come uh, visit my mom and uh, sister at her family's house uh in uh, in Canada here, so I just kind of hunker down until this this passes, which yeah. is really nice. It actually brings I I find it's actually bringing a little bringing people closer together in some ways uh as well, you know, especially family. Maybe too close if you have too many kids. <laughs> yeah. No, I have two young kids, so like I said during nap time yep. is like the best time. Mhm. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You're not homeschooling yet. <laughs> no, 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 not yet. So, uh, yeah, yeah. man, you've been busy the last few years, huh? With various TV show appearances, and recently you've done the Ruby Hearing Mysteries on Hallmark. And we'll talk about that, yep. but I want the listeners to get to know a little bit more about you. Where are you originally from? Sure. Um, I'm actually from uh, a small town in the middle of Canada called Saskatoon. It's kind of a tongue twister. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan is the province name. How, how was it uh, growing up there? <laughs> um, well, uh, pretty pretty awesome, actually. I mean, I was born in a blizzard. Um, it was in the middle of Jan- end of January, uh, January twenty fourth. Actually, is my birthday, and uh, it was uh, it was pretty crazy. We got down to very very cold Arctic kind of temperatures here, and it's it's uh, winter is the longest season <laughs> for us. All right. So uh, it was yeah a lot of skiing, uh, a lot of winter sports. Played a lot of hockey. Um, you know, just generally outside and, and dressed for it. Um, but then summers are beautiful, of course, and uh, there's many, many lakes around here. So I, um, I was out the sailing as a kid. I actually had a sailboat before I had a bicycle. So I've, I'm a kind of a water boy. And as soon as I could uh, travel outside the province, I headed to the ocean, and I, and I still do. I travel as much as I can, just <laughs> try to get out of the prairie yeah. and That's get awesome. to see the world. So it's uh, allowed me to kind of um yeah it's inspired me to travel more which has been great uh do you still uh do you still live in canada um yeah i'm based out of toronto these days yeah but she she pretty much everywhere so i you know an actor is kind of like yeah i kind of live here but (laughs) as we know in the industry yeah i'm a nomad i I recorded with somebody earlier and uh they're from montreal and um now they live in toronto yeah oh yeah yeah. okay great but, I, but I've, yeah. I've, had, I've had other actors, you know, they come on here like, oh, yeah, like, you know, I work a lot in Canada, but I live, you know, in New York or they live, you know, Chicago or something like that. It's just like. Yeah. 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 It's kind of it's wonderful. I mean, I can't um, sometimes I forget that I do live in Toronto. Like last year, I was, I was away for, I think, eight months of the year kind of thing. So it's uh, but I love it. I love traveling. As I said, I kind of grew up doing it. Um, and uh, I just it's really amazing to do it as a job. And. Yeah. meet people and experience different cultures it's pretty great so like growing up how did you know you wanted to get into the acting world um well <laughs> yeah it's funny because i get asked this question a lot um so the my first uh experience ever with acting was i was in grade two we did a we did a elementary school um a musical called old mcdonald had a farm i played old mcdonald <laughs> being whatever i was like seven <laughs> years old uh, so that was my first experience acting. I loved it. I thought it was the coolest thing that I was like, you know, could play something else. And, you know, my friends were dressed up as the dog or the, the wife or, you know, an animal or something like that. And it was just, it was cool. You know, I just, it, I think it just kept an imprint on me, um, you know, to be able to play and actually have people entertain people and make them laugh and cry and whatever else we did. <laughs> so that kind of stuck with me. But I ended up actually uh, getting a business degree. I went to Commerce, and I actually lived in Chicago. Funny you mentioned that city before, right, right after university. I was in corporate America for a couple of years. And then 
I just, just wasn't really jiving with me. It was fun, but it wasn't really my thing, I guess. And I just sort of um, had my quarter life crisis at 25 and decided to and sort of look back on my life. What do I really, what did I really enjoy? How, what have I enjoyed? And yeah. I, I kind of went back to that experience in grade two. And I'm like, I, I think I'm going to give it a shot. So uh, I had, that's when I really started taking it seriously, I guess. And then, um, yeah. And then fast forward here, here we are. Did you, uh, did you start taking acting lessons in Chicago? Or you just packed everything um, up and went back there? Um, I, I, I did a little bit, but I was sort of, uh, I, I came, uh, when I decided to go back to Canada at that point, and then I, I started studying a lot in Toronto and actually in Vancouver as well. And uh, yeah, sort of get, getting my feet wet in a lot of commercials first, and then you kind of start building up, finally get into sh- movies and shows. And, and, you know, experience is the best teacher, I think, you know, and I still I still study. I mean, I, yeah. um, it's wonderful to go back to class and just uh, mm-hmm. keep keep sort of uh, trying out new things and, and seeing where you can go. But ultimately, it's just it's wonderful to be on set and and, and to be, you know, in a um, environment on set where you're um, encouraged to, to try new things, too, which sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't. Mm. So, like, at yeah. 25 years old, when you decided you wanted to get into acting. Like, how did you, like, when you went back home and you told your family, you know what, the business world is not for me. I want to get into acting. Like, how did that go? Yeah, not so well. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, especially because, you know, they actually, you know, paid for my university and all that. Yeah. That, no, that was it wasn't, they weren't too excited about it, um, you know, and especially since it took us, it took a little bit to get going as well. It didn't all of a sudden happen overnight. Um so it was it was a bit of a struggle. I, I think they a lot of people, including you know my my family, but also my friends, just thought I was a little nutty. Um, you know, basically doing a 180. You know, from uh, from more of an analytical job to a completely creative job. But I don't know. I just you know I have very supportive family and and friends, and I think um, they they knew they couldn't stop me in a way. They they I, I think they kind of tried, but I really wasn't having any of it. So I just forged ahead and. You know, everyone's been very supportive, and um, I'm just really blessed that you know I, I didn't have to, you know, really struggle more than I did with uh, with my family and friends. They, you know, they were once once I'd made the decision, they supported me full mm. full, full on. So that was so, good. Yeah. So when you started taking the acting lessons, like how did that go? Like how would you describe the experience when you first walked in? Um, frustrating. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't really get out of my sort of management consulting corporate America head like I was very structured I thought things were black and white where it's not I mean the creative world's totally different so it took me a while to I guess lack of a better term reprogram my brain um, to be able just to think more broadly and actually not to think and feel more you know coming from a different place like a heartfelt place coming from an emotional place and it it really made me realize that you know a lot of people just never be or a lot of people just don't experience that as much so um it's actually helped me now in roles like when i play a lawyer when i play you know more kind of hard-headed roles or you know very uh, even even a detective that i play in in in, in the show we're going to talk about a little bit here he's he's very he's very thoughtful and he thinks a lot so i can relate to that because i was like that a lot and um you know it's it's i find it, it just Acting is all about a culmination of all your life experiences, you know, and uh, it's just about bringing that honestly, right, to the camera. So it's uh, so it, it was difficult to begin with, but then I now I realize it actually was a gift to be able to have all that experience beforehand as well. So you know? when you were taking the acting lessons, uh, in your like in mm-hmm. your thought, like what were you thinking? Like, did you want to like start off with theater, or did you like right away you like you know my goal is TV shows, movies. Right. Um, I, I, I knew I wanted to be in film and television. Yeah, I wasn't adverse to theater. I, I took a lot of um, scene study classes that were that we we'd actually study a lot of theater um, and a lot of sort of theatrical productions and we do plays and, and that in class. So I I definitely, you know, that wasn't uh, that wasn't definitely you know out of sort of my reach. But I, I, I knew that I was. I was really drawn to film and television and uh, I get so moved by film and television as well. And um, that was actually part of the reason I wanted to do it too, is because I just feel that it's one of the most provoking and, uh, you know, powerful storytelling uh, there is, uh, is film and television. And, um, you know, to be, to be a part of that's pretty, pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, so I, it was more of my focus from the beginning, but as I said, we, you know, I studied everything pretty much, um, you know, as in the beginning and, and still do actually. So, 
So when I was doing some research on you, you know, I, I real I I saw that you've done a lot of work. I'm going to mention a few shows because we could sit here all day talk about all the shows you've done. How did you get involved yeah. with Letter Kenny? <laughs> Letter Kenny, yeah. Um, well, I was living in. I'm still. I mean, it was a few years ago in Toronto. Um, I guess three three years ago is when we started. I started shooting the show um, with those guys. Are almost four now. Um, but yeah, just it's just one of those one of those sort of typical experiences where I went to the audition and, uh, you know, uh, playing it, went in for this hockey player named Yorkie and, uh, <laughs> I, I read the script and it was, it was, it was actually just, just when the show was, it was the second season of the show, but it hadn't really picked up yet. It was just starting to get noticed in Canada a bit. And, uh, so I, you know, but my agent's like, look, you gotta, you gotta take a look at this. It's like, this, you know, he, he knew the producer on the show and actually I had worked with, Jared Kiso, uh, the 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 actual creator of the show and one of the one of the leads in the show as well, before on a movie many years back, one of the first movies I shot actually in Vancouver, and uh, so I'm like, yeah, this, this sounds like kind of fun, and it was about hockey, and of course I grew up around the sport as well, yeah. and so uh, kind of went into it just you know taking as much as I could uh, out of my experiences as a youth, and and uh, hadn't wa- having watched some of the YouTube stuff that they've done before, I kind of got a feel for the show and. Uh, I guess it is like what I did, and you know, yeah. uh, before you knew it, I was I was Yorkie. Yeah. And, <laughs> and we started sh- shooting. I think uh, yeah. a month, like a few weeks later, I was up in northern. Uh, we shoot up actually uh, up in northern Ontario, a place called Sudbury. That's and where it, we shoot the show. So, and it's funny because yeah. the show has a huge following now. It does yeah, it's doing really well. I'm so proud of the guys. Yeah. They did such a great job, and they're doing some live. Well, they, they had started some live tours, of course, just before uh, you know that was shut down. Um, but uh, no, it's great and. It, it's being so true and so honest to sort of this 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 life you know this life of a small town and uh you know with hicks and hicks and hockey players and and you know and uh you know and everything else that go, goes along with it you know and uh so it's it's fun and, and i'm proud i'm proud to be part of it and i'm really happy that they've um you know really kept mm-hmm. that strong and canadian roots you know mm-hmm. so it's been great so, yeah. co- so a couple other projects you've done is like the Flash, Shadow Hunters, Eye Zombie, Fringe. Like, what's been your favorite from yeah. those? I always been my favorite. Ah, uh, wow, that's a good question. Um, geez, I mean, I I do a lot of comedy, and I, I love comedy. I think that's it's some of the best writing is, is in comedy, whether it's dark comedy or you know, or lighter comedy or romantic comedy. Um, so that's why I'm, I gravitate towards those projects a lot. But I do enjoy darker characters. Um, you know, you mentioned a few um, in the Flash. I was a villain, and that was super yeah. fun. It, it's really fun to play uh, not only a villain, but a, like a villain in like a superhero story where it's like you can go really far with the character in places that maybe you would normally go if it wasn't a fantasy world kind of thing. So I really enjoy that and having a you know a, sort of a bigger platform to play on. And um, and uh, I've, I've done a lot of sort of zombie kind of films, vampire films uh it all started with 30 days of night quite a few years ago um i think it was almost 10 years ago and uh it was it just it just got me excited about playing that darker side because um you know normally i get cast for tight cast as sort of the lovable kind of guy and the nice guy but it's it's i'm really blessed that i've been able to keep that up and and go dark um and i find it, it it's, it's a great challenge to sort of um bring those emotions up and really live in, in those characters earnestly. You know, the, the last show I did rabid was pretty crazy. Um, it was, it was sort of one of those, one of those, um, uh, performances where I really had to go there and literally lose my mind on it and, and turn sort of, you know, rabid as, as you say, you know, as, as yeah. it said, sort of, and have this, uh, this overtake me, you know, and sort of, you know, really lose, lose everything. Um, and really, deconstruct yourself so i enjoy it i enjoy both and um i'm always up for a challenge as an actor too i i think a death of an actor is when they just get comfortable about with a certain thing just do that you know for the rest of their life so yeah well like yeah because you mentioned you've done a lot of few, you know you've done a few projects for hallmark and you know and it's like there's nothing wrong with that either you know it's like if it's your bread yeah. and butter it's your bread and butter right absolutely no and i love the network they've been so well it's so good to me um and i do enjoy those projects i as much as I like, you know, the dark roles and, yeah. and the diverse roles, I do enjoy inspirational shows that are good for family and this that and you know, I think there is a lot of fear and darkness in the world and, and, and sometimes you need shows that are just uplifting and that are just nice and people enjoy them and feel better, you know, mm-hmm. after you see them. So I think it's 
I, I like to be a part of both of those because I think it just it helps helps humanity either way you look at it. Mm-hmm. So now you've done Ruby Hearing Mysteries. Uh, you've done a few movies for those, right? Yeah, we just shot and released actually our our third one. Uh, just released a few weeks ago in the U.S. Yeah. For the listeners, real quick, just tell us what the what would you call a series? I guess series, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's strange because it's actually feature length. So they're about well, they're two hours on television, but they're about ninety minute run times. But it's it is a, a movie series in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of like the third episode of this series, um, and you know the plan is to do more. Um, all depends how much the viewers like us. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, for the yeah. listeners, uh, give us a little, little like what's the series about? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, it's based on um, a woman, Ruby. Ruby. Her name is Ruby. Ruby Herring. She's a consumer investigative reporter. Um, and, um, and also my character, he's a detective, detective Jake Killian. And, um, you know, she, we basically, the, the shows are all about, you know, a, a murder, usually a murder case and, um, is uncovered, usually uncovered by her from her investigative reporting. And of course I'm, you know, I come on and I'm and part of the case as the lead detective. So we kind of crisscross each other and how we uncover these mysteries she's a very intuitive kind of heartfelt centered kind of gal and i'm very by the books detective so it's kind of fun because we have these these conflicting kind of styles and we step on each other's toes and you know of course there's a little bit of chemistry there so you have that yeah it's fun and 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 they're actually you know from what we've heard and from the reviews they're 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 actually they're very well written and and it's it is they're a true and true mystery so it's kind of fun for the audience to keep guessing who yeah. who was the murderer you know until the very end uh, very blessed to have Andrea Canning as our writer uh, as well and uh, we're we're all really good friends so it's uh, and we know each other well now so it's it's nice because we can you know she can sprinkle a little bit of more of our personalities into the characters as the series goes on so do you remember your audition for this. Um, th- for this, yeah. th- did I audition for this one? Um, no, I believe this was offered because I had worked, uh, on a few movies for Hallmark before. So yeah. they were familiar with my work and, uh, I guess the opportunity was, was, uh, just presented itself and they, they were, they wanted to launch a new mystery series and that was available. So it worked out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now you, pl- you, pl- you play Jake. How would you describe him? How would I describe Jake? Um, well, he's, a uh, He's he's kind of a, uh, as I said before, uh, sort of a by the book detective. He's um, has a bit of skeletons in the past. He had an incident in New York. Uh, he was based out of New York before he came back to Seattle, and that's before the the series had started. And uh, it was an unfortunate tragedy that happened on the job. So he's kind of a little bit scarred uh, with that, which which kind of keeps him a little more in line. He doesn't really risk too much uh, the, his detective style. So he's uh, that sort of what has um, sort of guided him to be a more traditional kind of det- uh, detective. Um, he's a mama's boy. He loves to bake. <laughs> uh, he loves to sail. Uh, outdoorsy kind of guy. Um, keeps pretty fit. Um, yeah, just all in all, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good detective. He gets he gets a little pissed off, um, you know, when uh, R- Ruby, played by Taylor Cole, kind of steps on his toes and and does things behind his back. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's a bit of a riff there with her, but, um, good thing. She's really cute and good at what she does. So So, (laughs) she gets away with it. So when you got the role, like what kind of research did you do to like, uh, figure out how you're going to play the character? Did you go, like, did you go watch like other movies similar to it? Yeah. I mean, there's, um, the, yes, definitely. Um, I definitely did a lot of research, even way back to lethal weapon and stuff. And started watching the original stuff just to, also, just to see the dynamics between uh, characters and how they play. So, yeah, I watched I watched a lot of those. Um, even the um, uh, one of our the, the director we had before this, uh, Fred Gerber, he mentioned uh, to watch Moonlighting because he really wanted that kind of feel oh, yeah. between the characters. Yeah, just that kind of tension. They're always sort of on each other's toes, always bugging each other, but it's like you know, they're still really cute together. So, you know, doing a lot of that just in terms of getting to the characters, in terms of the actual cop work itself yeah absolutely it might, i hadn't played a detective before so I, I had to do a little research in in more technical kind of things of how it's done and and so i can play it as as real as possible and and then additionally just build a backstory around my character because we weren't 
you know, they, we weren't given too much to work with. And, um, yeah. you know, the, the writers and the director were pretty open to how we wanted to build these characters. And it's tough because we knew that it potentially could go many shows and it, it sort of turned into this feature series. So we kind of had to build it ourselves. And it was fun, you know, just to just to, to understand where what motivates us to do what we do. So, you know, just sort of, as I said, building a bit of a backstory of where he came from, etc. So uh, and then when so when we got on there, it was, uh, you know, we had a little more clear direction, but we keep building as we go. It's still pretty fresh. We're only, you know, three shows in. And so, you know, we're, we're sort of um, peppering the audience with a little more information, especially this last one with with um, more personal information of the characters, especially on both sides of, of uh, Taylor's characters as well as mine, which uh, bringing up some sort of old relationships and all that, so uh, the audience can get a little more get get a little more into the characters mm-hmm. as we go along. Speaking of Taylor, Ellie, how is it working next to her? <laughs> well, she definitely steals the show. <laughs> She's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, I got to be on my game. She's an amazing actor and uh, just. Just thrilled. I mean, we right away from our first table read uh, when we were both cast, it was just it was you're you know there's that tension when you sort of sit down. And you're like, oh my gosh, you know this could be many years with this person. You know, like how are we going to get along? But literally about ten minutes in, we just started cracking up and laughing because I don't know what I can't even remember what we were laughing at the script. I think one of us just like you know whatever just couldn't read something properly, and then we realized okay, we're going to be good. <laughs> so we have a similar sense of humor and. Um, it's just really easy to work with her, super professional, and uh, we're good friends, and that's you know that really helps a lot. That's for sure. Where, um, how long does it take to film one of these movies? Um, about a month or so, give or take. I mean, that's just actual shooting time. Actually, even a little less sometimes, um, three weeks or so. But this course, just so much, you know, a few months prep as well as you know post production, etc. So. You know, um, we turn it around pretty quick, though. I think, um, you know, I think it was only a couple months after we finished shooting, they managed to get it, uh, get the the premiere out in the U.S. on the Hallmark Network. So they move pretty quick with it. Yeah, definitely. They're they're a well-oiled machine, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Where does it get filmed? Um, we've done the past, though, all three of them have been shot in Vancouver, okay. uh, British Columbia, and Canada. Yeah, just north of Seattle. Yeah, but the it is supposed to be in seattle is, is sort of yeah. the, the place of the show so it uh, doubles as seattle um which vancouver looks a lot like seattle so it works have they mentioned anything about like turning this to an actual series like a weekly series or no um i haven't no heard heard mention of that i mean they they hallmark does have a few other mystery series that are uh, like kind of a similar Okay. Similar format where they're yeah. just features. Um, we may shoot more sort of at once, depending, I guess, on the demand and so on. Um, but it, no, there hasn't been talk of actually becoming actually a, a TV series per se, a weekly mm. thing. No. So you've been so you've been acting for how many years now? Would you say ten years? Yeah, just over yeah, ten, yeah. twelve years now. I guess yeah, yeah. wow, it's like a whole lifetime almost. Time uh, to do something else. No, just kidding. <laughs> what, do you, what do you enjoy more, uh, self tape or auditioning in front of a? directors and cast oh um that's a good question you know it really depends how the room is i, I enjoy both um i used to hate going into the room i used to be terrified of walking in there and getting i thought judged you know especially yeah. in the beginning but now i just love it it's just it's fun to perform especially if you know obviously you gotta you want to be prepared um and just bring something cool you know um so i i do enjoy self tapes too because i get to i guess work on a little more and explore a bit more. But then the other flip side of that is there is that energy that you can't get that's in the room. And especially if the director is there, usually ask my team, um, my manager, my agent, this, if, if, if there is a, if they ask, want me to come in and if there is a director, then I will definitely go. Um, sometimes if there's a choice, if they're just taping anyways, sometimes I opt to just do it sort of on my own. Yeah. yeah with my friends. Yeah. I, I like asking this question next up. Uh, when you go audition in yeah. front of people, like, what do you do before that? Is there like anything you do? Like, like some people like to say they go off for drives. They don't want to talk to anybody. Other people like like to take a nap before they go in. Like, what's your thing? Right. Um, yeah, I like to be pretty secluded. I don't necessarily like to talk to a lot of people before I go in, but that's sometimes impossible because it's a jammed audition room. Sometimes. Yeah. Um, I like to do a bit of meditation, just really calm my mind, do some breathing. 
main thing is for me is I just I just want to get out of my head and get into my body, so to speak. So in other words, just really feel as much as I can before I go in and not think too much about what I'm going to do. Um, and then usually that's when I have uh, the best the best auditions. It's just I'm just really present. I'm really there, and um, you know, just doing my best work. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier you were 25 years old. You quit the corporate mm-hmm. corporate American job to go on and tr- uh, try your acting skills and everything what's what's the what's an advice that you give to somebody that tells you they want to become an actor what do you tell them go for it (laughs) yeah just do it of course if you want to do anything just do it i mean i you know the the odds were definitely are out you're you know normally they're against you right when you try to do something like this but i mean i went from one extreme to the other and as long as you're passionate about it and you're willing to do the work go for it you know and just and don't give up like that's the other thing i mean there's um you know, for better, or for worse, a lot of friends I've met on the way just gave up, you know, and it's too bad because I just, there's, I really feel like if you, if you can see it, if you really want to do it and you're clear of your goal, you'll reach that goal. You know, it's just a matter of time. Sometimes it might take a bit longer than you anticipated, you know, and that's, you can't really control that, but I really do feel you can control the outcome by just focusing on it. So yeah, I'd say go for it. You mentioned how you still, you know, you still do like acting lessons and stuff like that. Like who are like some of your influences in the acting world that you look up to that like, you, sometimes you just go back, you throw in, you know, well, you, nobody really throws in DVDs anymore, but you know, like digital or something like that, <laughs> that you want to watch something like, you know, I don't want to watch this person just, just, uh, you know. Yeah. Oh man. I got so many. Yeah. It just, it just really depends. Um, yeah, it just depends on the character I'm, um, I'm portraying or, or yeah. who I want to study. I, I really draw from so many people. Like I, God, just to name a few, I love Michael Fassbender's work. I think he's a very, very talented actor, you know, cu- currently. Um, you know, the the commitment of him is just phenomenal. I could name probably 10 more guys like him, you know, um, inc- you know, including, um, yeah, you know, all the guys, especially even Leo DiCaprio's latest work is just phenomenal. You know, I think he's really pushing the envelope. And then, you know, back in the classics, you know, the the greats back in the day, um, you know, there's there's just so many. I, I mean, I, I, it'd be, <laughs> I'd be able to name so many, but there's it just really depends on the role, really. Um, there's, um, you know, and uh, what I'm just trying to prepare for. And I just, I just really like to sometimes I just like to just throw throw a performance in and just and just really get moved by it, you know, and if, if it's emotionally or a tough guy role or, a, 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 you know, just a fun guy, whatever it is. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. when you're not working on your downtime, what do you, uh, what do you enjoy doing? Um, on my downtime, um, I do a lot of yoga these days <laughs> cause I can't really get out of the house too much cause of what the situation is. So, um, I, uh, I take it pretty seriously. So I do that pretty much every day. Um, and just to keep myself fit. I try to get out for runs, some bike rides, no gym. So I think I'm losing a lot of muscle as we speak. Um, I'm trying to order like weights, but it's like impossible to get them online or anywhere these days. It's crazy. So mm. I'm kind of kind of stuck without those. Um, but I do producing work as well. I produce films, so I'm I'm just getting getting some scripts in development right now. So you know, when the, I think a lot of a lot of actors are the same way that they actually have some writing skills or, or producing skills or just getting some projects lined up so that when we're ready to go again. Knock on wood, sooner than later, you know, um, we can actually, you know, help help uh, fill this content glut that we're gonna have. <laughs> right. This is gonna be a, after yeah. after all this ends. This will be a lot of content. It's gonna get pushed out. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I really do. Like, there's there's this uh, there was already a huge demand, and we were seeing the busiest time ever for film and TV. So I just feel like it's when it hits and people are cool right with getting back together again i think it's gonna go it's gonna go pretty big so i'm looking forward to that and i think everyone's gonna be pretty amped to to get going oh yeah yeah. so where do you see yourself 10 20 years from now um well i i want to continue acting i think i think the roles just keep getting more interesting for me so i'm just really focused on that um you know i'm i'm just really passionate about helping the world as best as i can too and, and doing any sort of philanthropic stuff i can do i I am involved with some projects that help um, to get some good content out to help the situation with bullying in school, um, awesome. bullying, bullying, et cetera. Um, I'm involved with some water, clean water projects as well. And um, so I guess just using um, acting entertainment almost as a platform to, to get some good messages out there as, as well. Mm-hmm. So 
I think those combinations of those those two things is sort of my focus. And uh, and when I can produce, uh, continue producing some of my own films. Yeah, mm. for sure. It's, how, it's, a, it's a good story and I think it can benefit people. How did you get involved with the bullying thing? Um, well, I produced a movie uh, called Milton's Secret. It's uh, a movie based on a, loosely based on a story uh, by an, uh, an author named Eckhart Tolle. He's more of like a, a new age kind of author, but he wrote a fictional, uh, co-wrote a fictional book. And so... It was all about a, a kid who was being bullied at school, and um, and then he just learned some really great lessons of compassion from his grandfather, played by uh, Donald Sutherland. And uh, Michelle Rodriguez was actually in the film uh, uh-huh. as well. A good friend of mine. She played a teacher, and uh, yeah, we had we had a good, it was a good cast. And the whole idea was just to to create content that really would inspire kids, um, you know, at this in this issue right with bullying and, and how to sort of combat it, and then. We also created a curriculum uh, for schools uh, as well. That was so. It was the idea was the the classroom watches the movie, and then after the movie, there's a lesson plan that the kids can go through. It's for middle school, grades seven to ten or so. That's awesome. So um, yeah, so that's that's what I'm involved with now, and we're pushing out the curriculum to schools and uh, as much as we can, and uh, just so you know, the, it seems like I know that sort of bullying's in the back burner because of all of this stuff going yeah. happening, but it's yeah. still. It's, it's still an important topic, yeah. and it it's, still happens. It's, it's still, yeah. it still happens, and with all the social media and everything, yeah. it still happens. Yeah, it does. Yeah, especially people are on the phone so much now and on your devices. I mean, that's happening more cyber, cyberly, I guess, more than yeah. anything. So, yeah. So, speaking of social media, how can the listeners find you on there? Um, well, I'm pretty boring. Just my name, my first name, and last name. So Stephen with a PH and Huzar with a S Z H U S Z A R. <laughs> and uh, I'm just at Stephen Huzar for uh, my Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. All right, Stephen, this was fun. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, thanks a lot. I had a blast. You take care of yourself, and uh, talk to you next time. That's a wrap. That's a wrap, everybody. That's a wrap. Thanks for listening to the Man Cave Chronicles podcast. I finally get my man cave. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at the MCC Podcast. And our website, themccpodcast.com. Until next time. Until next time.